where Generation Next enters this space is really around the data. So we have now six goal areas, thanks to, again, the work around adding that sixth goal, but we look cradle to career at um, all of the efforts along a, an, an individual's growth through academics and social emotional to determine what are the strategies that we engage in. And so um, this is a space, since there hasn't been a similar community-wide standardized measure of SEL, um, much like we were able to find for, let's say, third grade reading, eighth grade math, the first place that we started in this conversation was really about getting clear on what we thought some consistent measures would be across both of our school districts um, and um, the young people who would be in our K-12 um, space. And again, the work of our data committee identified four um, SEL competencies that we looked at, and Gail spoke to three of them. I do want to point out that um, Minneapolis Public Schools, in addition to commitment to learning, positive identity, uh, social competence, is also looking at academic persistence as one of the goals. And so we at Generation Next took those four SEL indicators and worked with both of our school districts, St. Paul Public Schools and Minneapolis Public Schools, to look at what the data were saying around those. We have two years of data across three of the um, competencies for St. Paul Public Schools. We have one year of data for Minneapolis schools. And so now that we have sort of a foundation, we can work with United Way, Propel SEL, um, and some of our other funders and supporters to look at, okay, now that we understand better what's happening in this space around these, what are the specific strategies that we need to engage in? And one of the areas that we're looking at both is um, the development around um, SEL itself and those skill sets in those areas, but then also how do we um, use those learnings to make the connections that Heather spoke to about out of school time and the um, in school time. And what is it about how an individual student shows up in the out of school space that we, we may want teachers to learn from? Because sometimes educators on the ground, youth development workers on the ground, have conversations about an individual child and sometimes they wonder, are they talking about the same person? Because this is not how individual A shows up in my classroom versus how they show up in the after school space. So clearly we need to figure out how those two environments can really um, learn as much as they can about a student to support them in their success in whatever way that is. So I'll, I'll say that we're starting with data. Um, we're learning more about that. I want to really acknowledge Jonathan May on our team in Generation Next. He is uh, leading our work on um, SEL and he is our data person and so he's making sense of some new data. I also I also really want to acknowledge Dr. Michael Rodriguez for his leadership. It was actually, I remember in my former role in St. Paul Public Schools, him coming to one of our data discussions to share the student survey information and we were all dumbfounded by some of the new information that we learned. And particularly when a lot of the conversation um, on the academic side is about the opportunity gap and the wide disparities that we have in math and reading, um, you don't expect to see the kind of data that data they'll show today about how our student groups of color are um, really high on commitment to learning. They're really high on um, some of these SEL competencies. So how can we change the narrative, which is mostly deficit-based, about our students of color and our indigenous students to be more positive with more information that we learn? So our role in this conversation is about understanding the data better, being a part of that conversation, and from there, working with all of the folks in this space on really what the effects effective strategies are.